Laying siege on Shabbos, another halacha. Gaza is supposed to be Jewish. We've seen this. It was ours once upon a time. Jews were there uh, in Second Temple times also. Basically, I would never, I wouldn't say it was an entirely Jewish city like Jerusalem or Hebron, and it stayed like that for many years. But don't forget, Hebron itself, we lost it uh, with the Babylonian conquest. Certain places have been very hard to hold on to, even within the land of Israel. Das Bicker points out Beit Sha'an was lost uh, to the Jewish people in Saul's time. And it says with Saul's defeat also, Jews went into exile. Saul's, uh, Saul uh, and his defeat at Har Gilboa, and cities were taken by the Philistines. So this has happened before that. We've lost territory within the land of Israel. Gaza is one of the harder places to hold on to, but we have commandment to hold on to it because it is part of greater Eretz Israel, just like places up north, and just like Hebron itself. Shechem, there's a problem, like Rabbi Tzvi Yehuda Kuk was crying in 67. We haven't held on to well enough these major Jewish cities, Shechem, Hebron, we're still a little bit lackadaisical with our obligation to settle these places, places in the Galil also. So laying siege on Shabbos, let's get back to that halacha. This is mentioned explicitly in the Talmud a few times. What? Uh, when the soldiers are at war, they basically ignore Shabbos. They're not supposed to try to keep Shabbos. It's dangerous for them. They're supposed to fight the war until they win. And Shabbos, they ignore for all intents and purposes. So too laying siege. Sometimes you're not actively fighting. Uh, you have to lay a proper siege to a city. That's how you actually win. If you want to destroy the enemy, you have to lay a proper siege. A proper siege means nothing leaves, nothing enters, especially food and supplies. There's no such thing as laying siege to a city, but allowing them to have food and water, everything else they need, and money, uh, possibly arms, uh, every uh, ways to communicate with the outside world. Those are all foolish things. But uh, assuming we're keeping the halacha, the siege, once it begins... Also, on Shabbos, you continue with it, even though it involves what would ostensibly be uh, desecration of the Shabbos. Yes, there's halacha if it's a, a war that's discretionary, that the, son, the Sanhedrin decided. It wasn't the war of necessity, what's called the Milchemes Mitzvah, which we have not engaged in in thousands of years, by the way. A law of a discretionary war. They've all been wars of necessity. If it's a discretionary war, you're not supposed to start the siege before Shabbos. That's not right. But once it, the siege has started, and especially in an obligatory war, so uh, or a necessary war, we continue with the siege. This is mentioned by the Rambam, where uh, he, he says it in at right at the beginning of Hilchos Shabbos and at the end of Hilchos Shabbos, and uh, in the laws of war, of course. So you're supposed to have a siege going, and you're supposed to do it on Shabbos. And it's brought by the tour. The tour mentions this. But the Beis Yosef, despite the fact that these three places in the Rambam, he'll point to you where, where the source is in the Talmud, and he'll also analyze what the tour has to say, because the Beis Yosef is a very long and uh, excellent, uh, I think, how can you stay halacha without the Beis Yosef? It's an excellent commentary on the tour. It's the basis of the Shulchan Aruch. So he tells you where this is brought. He's very much aware of this, but he himself left it out of the Shulchan Aruch. So Shulchan Aruch isn't going to Tell you that yes, we we lay siege to the cities on uh, on on Shabbos. Very interesting. He just left this out. It should be in Simon in Orachaim, a Simon Reish Bemtet, which would be Mark uh, two forty nine. I'll read you what the Rambam says uh, in uh, here. Uh, I'll read inside. I can't put it on the screen right now, but I'll read it to you. It says, "Ain't so rinal riot shall goim pachot mishloshem im kodem Shabbat." We do not lay siege to the cities of the nations uh, less than three days before the Sabbath. So that they have time to uh, gather themselves. Well, the warriors have time to gather themselves. So that they not be uh, worried about it. Well, how are you going to get ready for Shabbos? By the way, he was talking about, like we said, discretionary war. So too, uh, we don't get on, let's say, a boat. We don't start taking a boat to Alexandria. Uh, less than three days before the Shabbos because it's going to ruin your Shabbos. And he continues, And just like we can, we have to lay siege when necessary, we don't look at the Shabbos. So too, if you have to get on the boat now, there's a Dvar Mitzvah, have to set sail on Thursday or Friday, so you do so. And the Rambam says he connects these two dinim. The, the important part is the And that's why uh, the laws of getting on a boat before Shabbos are a reflection of the initial halacha, the source halacha, about laying siege. And the tour 
brings this also. He uh, he says here, "Ain't sarin b'milchemet arishut al reot shel of the kolim elin kini chilu shloshayimim kodem ashabat." And it's more we don't start the siege less than uh, three days before the Sabbath. And in milchemet mitzvah, you do it even on Shabbos. And then he continues this thing: you're not traveling a certain time in elchim of Shabbat. If you're actually traveling on our Shabbos, you have to give yourself sufficient time. And then you look in Shulchan Aruch, Reish Mem Tet, he left out the entire thing there. He just says, yeah, we don't we don't travel. You have to be smart the way you travel on Arab Shabbos. You have to make sure you'll get to the Yishuv within, uh, by means of settled area within a certain amount of time. So you can see that this is yet another example of what? That is, uh, the Shulchan Aruch is an incomplete work. The Shulchan Aruch, I'm not talking about the Beis Yosef, the author of the Beis Yosef, like I said, there's a, there's a, he's, he's the most widely held posseg of the last thousand years since the death of Maimonides. So he's given us an analysis of many of these halachas. The Shulchan Aruch intentionally doesn't have all the halachas that we need to live our lives right now. By the way, not all the 39 halachas are even mentioned in the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch is complete to the extent that it could be relied upon for that which is in it. But if something is absent from the Shulchan Aruch, it doesn't mean that it's not part of the halacha. The Shulchan Aruch is incomplete, and we have to know that. We could keep the entire Shulchan Aruch, so to speak, and follow uh, the Nosei Kalim thereon. But we have to know that there's many things that the Beis Yosef himself knows is absent of the Shulchan Aruch, even though they are completely binding. Even though not, they are completely necessary for us to learn, for us to become familiarized with them, and actually put them into practice. So don't don't uh, don't get your shulchan aruch wrong. Understand what what's what it's there for, and what I wouldn't even call this a drawback. Just know not everything is in the shulchan aruch. Yeah, and uh, that's why. By the way, I was asked this question. I I just told those those who had who had asked me what they think about uh, laying siege to Gaza on Shabbos. What's the problem? Uh, I don't know who's worse, the the Americans who want that the, the bad guys in Gaza continue getting supplies so that they can continue making war with us and killing us, or the Israeli regime that was going along with it. Uh, I said that uh, I thought it was unfortunate that I lived to see people behaving like in Holocaust times because of the China virus, people behaving like snitches and things like that. And now, unfortunately, I've seen people behaving like the Udenrat. There are too many people who are just happy to be functionaries of uh, our enemies. They're just Jews, Jews who are just following orders, you know, just going along with it, whatever it is, you know, we're trying to save themselves, and they're going to be the first to go. And you know who I'm talking about here. So there are those good Jews who are trying to stop uh, the supplies from going into Gaza, making the siege. And the question was, can they do whatever they're doing on Shabbos? And the answer is yes, it's right in Halakha here, even though if you look at Shulchan Aruch, it's not there. It's explicit in the Talmud, and it's explicit in the codes that came before the Talmud, and it's explicit in the Beis Yosef. You are supposed to lay siege to Gaza even on Shabbos, and therefore whatever is necessary to prevent the entrance of supplies to Gaza, even on Shabbos, go ahead and do. And if Halavai, there was someone who could somehow uh, cut off the water supply and the electricity supply to Gaza, if there's anybody who knows, Mitzvah Gedola to do such a thing, and uh, yeah, his, his, his reward is immeasurable. And it's a mitzvah to do so even on Shabbos. Why? Because that's what says in the Shulchan Ar- That's what says in the Halach, not the Shulchan Ar-